Welcome to this On Semiconductor webcast. In this webcast, we'll discuss some challenges in the automotive industry as it relates to power supplies and expose you to some innovative solutions to solve these challenges. The complexities associated with power management modules for the automotive industry continue to grow, not only due to the traditional challenges like the ability to handle higher current situations, low dumps, double battery jumps, and the need to draw minimal current conditions, but also due to increased demands of automobiles. Automotive electronics engineers have additional challenges, like increasing electronics module content within vehicles driven by customer desire, convenience needs, safety requirements, and the move from mechanical components to the mechatronics world. Some of these challenges include falling digital component supply voltages, rising currents within digital components, growing governmental regulations for CO2 emissions, and increasing miles per gallon requirements. The drive to maximize power efficiency has been one of the core objectives of design. Thermodynamically, energy transfer of real-world system is not perfect. That is, input power can never be equal to the output power due to factors like heat dissipation and other system losses. This is measured by power efficiency, defined as the ratio of the output power divided by the input power. Hence, the losses in form of heat dissipation is manifested in the fraction of the output power generated by a system compared to the input power. Let's discuss this concept of power efficiency as it relates to linear and switch mode power supplies. As you can see, both linear and switch mode power supplies in this example have 2.5 watt power ratings with 5 volt output voltage and 0.5 amp output current. But linear, the linear regulator has an efficiency of 41%. It says it takes 6 watts of input power to generate 2.5 watts of output power. This loss of power is attributed to heat dissipation across the voltage regulator, hence making it a poor choice of a regulator. Similarly, the switch mode regulator, on the other hand, has an efficiency of 90%, saying it takes 2.8 watts of pow input power to generate the 2.5 watts of output power. Power efficiency is a system challenge due to issues like falling supply voltages due to digital components and excessive power dissipation, especially in the case of linear regulators. This is an overview of system power supply topologies, highlighting the evolution of automotive power supplies. The pure linear solution in Figure 1 is where the LDO is directly connected to the battery via non-ignition switch line. As you can see, the output is from the post LDO. This configuration is useful for low power applications. In Figure 2, as you can see, the buck regulator is connected to the battery powered LDO. When the ignition is switched, the buck regulator helps with the switching, hence making this configuration an ideal fit for high power applications like advanced driver assisted systems or ADAS applications. Figure 3 shows the addition of a start stop pre booster which turns on and off on the ignition. The boost controller is added for low voltage cranking compliance to meet ISO 1750-2. This configuration is useful for start-stop applications. Figure 4 is an evolution of the configuration found in Figure 3, where the battery-powered LDO has been replaced by the low quiescent current buck and boost controllers. This architecture is used for a driver system application. For designers, it's imperative to understand the considerations of moving from linear to switching regulation and what impact it might have on their designs. As discussed earlier, linear regulators have poor efficiency due to excessive heat dissipation and other system losses. However, advantages of a linear approach include good noise performance, a flexible differential voltage range, and lower external component count, hence consuming less PCB area. A switch mode approach fundamentally has higher efficiency as compared to the linear approach. However, disadvantages include poor noise performance, primarily due to a switching nature, a complex feedback loop, and a higher external component count that consumes more PCB area. Let's discuss some design considerations for switch mode power supplies and ways to mitigate their disadvantages. 
One of the first design considerations to consider is electromagnetic interference, which can be mitigated by optimizing the PCB layout and reducing loop areas. You can also avoid susceptible frequencies, especially those imposed by regulators or by the system environment. And you can reduce peak, peak emissions by employing techniques like spread spectrum modulation, shaping spectral contents, and decoupling methods. Another consideration is the external component count, which varies uh, the power consumption of each application. Integrated power switches provide a flexible approach to reduce the PCB layout size with low power consumption as compared to out-of-board power switches. The third consideration is the PCB area. Increasing the switching frequency is achieved by decreasing the size of the inductor and capacitor, hence reducing the overall PCB consumption area. Reducing the PCB area also has the effect of minimizing conduction and switching losses. A fourth design consideration is feedback loop design. Frequency compensation is achieved by choosing single pole response control schemes. You should also select a suitable negative input resistance for post regulators matching the output impedance to avoid oscillations. Effective use of simulation tools to understand frequency compensation in the frequency domain will also aid in the development of your design. Here we will expose you with the increasing demand of start-stop systems in the market due to fuel economy standards and regulated CO2 emissions protocols. Challenges faced by engineers and designers due to the importance of reducing the operating time of an engine during idle mode to reduce fuel consumption has become the top priority. In the upcoming slides, we'll discuss this concept of start-stop systems in further detail. Cranking an engine allows the vehicle's engine to turn on battery power without actually allowing the engine to start. When you insert the key for ignition and turn the switch to on, a signal is sent to the car's battery. Upon receiving this signal, the car's battery delivers electrical power to the starter for cranking the engine. This leads to severe voltage drop during this cranking mode. High power centralized multi-phase boost and distributed low power signal phase boost are mainly used to address this problem. Information, communication, and entertainment both in and with the vehicle are an integral part of automotive development. The only way to implement today's large choice of navigation, entertainment, telematics, and driver assisted systems is by using high performance interfaces. Companies are continually growing their system integration competence and using it to develop smart solutions for integrating and connecting all kinds of different vehicle functions using, graphic, using a graphic processor unit. Single and multi-phase switch mode power supplies with dynamic voltage scaling are used in driver assisted systems which is a great challenge for engineers. Advanced driver assisted systems are safety and convenience systems developed to provide safer driver experience by assisting a driver in the complex process of controlling a vehicle. ADAS provides features like adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring, lane departure warning, night vision, lane keeping assist, and collision warning systems with automatic steering and braking intervention. Advancement in these technologies will require high precision and customizable individual power modules and power supplies. ADAS systems require the integration of various sections of the vehicle like camera, GPS, radar, and rotary encoder all into one module. This is achieved by successfully connecting each section using communication techniques like Ethernet. ADAS systems should comply with ISO 26262 by implementing functional safety of the overall vehicle and safer driver experience. ADAS offers a specialized service to the power supply section by providing watchdog function capability, monitoring power supply redundancy, and voltage monitoring. As you can see from the block diagram, from a power supply view for an ADAS system, this architecture provides new, numerous advantages such as low noise performance for radar and GPS applications. 
Growth in light duty 48 volt system sales will continue through the end of the current decade, mainly because of the most aggressive campaign in implementing fuel economy and emissions regulations. The German luxury vehicle manufacturers like BMW have collaborated to develop a 48 volt system that sets the foundation for more capable start-stop systems that will enable other electrification features. 48 volt configuration combines a dual voltage step up with the well-known uh, advantages of start-stop technology. It more effectively captures a vehicle's braking energy, provides power for a growing list of electrical loads, and simultaneously boosts fuel efficiency, possibly by as much as 15%. Some of the key advantages of 48 volt architecture are that it provides increased power efficiency, reduces the current delivered to the load, and reduces the weight of the wiring harness. It also increases efficiency in switch mode power supplies and increasing in, increases miles per gallon. The 48 volt configuration marries with the conventional 12 or 14 volt network using a lead acid battery like those employed in most conventional vehicles along with a 48 volt lithium ion battery with a separate 48 volt network. The 12 volt 12 volt network handles traditional loads, lighting, ignition, entertainment, audio systems, and electronic modules, while the 48 volt system supports active chassis systems, air conditioning compressors, and regenerative braking. In addition to this, the 48 volt lithium ion battery has more charging capability, making it a better candidate for capturing regenerative braking energy. For more information about on semiconductor automotive application solutions, contact your local on semiconductor sales representative or authorized distributor, or visit us on the web at www.onsemi.com. Thank you.